Dr. Steve Pachenik, uh, as we're in the middle of this, the election's over. We're now in the stealing process of the election. Uh, what are you seeing? What's going through your mind as you're witnessing this gigantic hoax? Number one, it's not a hoax. What's happening now, and the reason I couldn't come on the Alex Jones show last night was I was not given the permission that I needed to in order to say what I'm about to say now. I do not work for the federal government. I'm not paid by them. Let me just say again what I said in 2016. There are honorable members of our intelligence, military, and civilian community in the government who understood exactly how corrupt Biden and the Democratic machinery is, was, and will be. This is really a sting operation. Contrary to what everybody else said, Trump knew this was happening. Eric knew this was happening and warned the public. I knew this was happening. However, I could not say anything about it. What happened was we marked, watermarked every ballot with what's called the QFS blockchain encryption code. In other words, we know pretty well where every ballot is, where it went, and who has it. So this is not a stolen election. On the contrary, we reversed the entire game of war along the lines of Sun Tzu, the art of war. And Trump was brilliant and still is brilliant at it. The reason he hasn't been seen, and Alex correctly said, oh, I haven't seen him in several days. Well, in the art of the war, you pull back, allow your enemy to make all the mistakes that they are making, manipulate the situation, expose them, and then come in for the final killing. And that's what's happening now. None of this was unexpected. All of this was expected. All of this is part of the sting operation we're running. And let me tell you that 48 hours ago, not only did we put markers on those ballots, but I can say now, with the permission of people in the intelligence community and elsewhere, that we have sent out thousands and thousands of National Guards to 12 different states, Washington, Delaware, Texas, Arizona, Alabama, and everywhere. So now you have to consider and rethink what this is really about. The genius of Trump is that he is able to pull back at any point and manipulate the opponent without the opponent ever realizing. He has said repeatedly, hashtag steal the vote. That's exactly what he has said for months. Then he made a very clear implication. He said, I will use common sense or my intelligence, i.e. both literal and figurative intelligence. And those of us in the intelligence community, be it who they are, again, what I said in 2016, when we exposed Hillary Clinton, we now exposed, and it was Trump who initiated this, Biden family. Hunter Biden, Joe Biden, Jill Biden, Jim Biden, Frank, the whole family was played right into a game where they were convicted and you're seeing what's happening now. What was not announced was that we watermarked all the ballots with what I said at the QFS blockchain, which is a very hard encryption code to break. And the second thing is we sent as I probably 20,000 or, or more our National Guards, 48 hours ago, none of it was reported, and I thank the press for not reporting it and others. So what in fact is happening is you're seeing a sophisticated sting operation that was initiated by Trump. I'm just a lowly peasant in this game, and honestly, I was informed that I could say something about it today, only last night. That's why I could not come on. Well, you've so just this is the reverse of what you guys have been thinking. It's not a civil war. We have not been surprised in any way. This has been a set up by Trump for a long, long time in the same way that we knew about Hillary Clinton. I warned about the coup that we we would do a counter coup. And this is our counter coup again against the Bidens. And that's exactly what we expected. The corruption in the mail, the corruption of USPS, with corruption with the Democrats everywhere and anywhere. There was no surprise here. And that's why we deployed National Guard soldiers to 12 different states. Well, uh, Steve, you've just broken certainly perhaps the biggest news 
since the election here on this show, I, I have to play this out logically in my head. Our oh, arrest, our that's arrest. why I go on your show to basically, I keep saying. Well, I love you, Steve. I'd kiss you on the lips right now if it wasn't digitally. Can't. But uh can't get too many people watching us. We're open like that. We're tolerant. But, but Steve, following your logic here, I mean, are arrests inevitably coming down the road? Yeah. They're coming not just down the road. They're being implemented. What you saw Corey Wendowski and Pam Biondi saying when they were in Clay County and as well in Philadelphia, that was not just a threat. That was exactly what's going to happen. People will be arrested as of tonight, tomorrow, and it will go on for quite a while. And this was a total sting operation that I can say. So I explain... Anybody else? Well, well, as I you, have the permission to say it. I do not deal with classified information, as you know. I do not work for our government, but because I'm loyal to the republic, and I work with a lot of people who are loyal to this republic, including the 16 intelligence services, the Secret Service, our civilian service. They've all been great, and they've kept it quiet. And I've been given the permission to say what I've just said. I have nothing more to say, but this is not a surprise here. This is the biggest sting operation probably in our country that we've ever had. Well, and, and it would be it, it, it would be the genius of Trump. But, but Steve, I got to ask in the last minute, 45 here to kind of hone in. So how is this watermark on the ballots? Wh- what is the significance of that as to is it going to stop from fake ballots being counted or, or how is that going to be used? Well, we use it in any way that we need to use it in terms of counting, knowing which ones were fake, which ones were not. It's a very sophisticated code. So if you just throw them away, these are cyber communication uh, implementations that we have the code for. We know exactly what was thrown away. We know exactly what was placed. We know exactly who has it, and we know exactly where it went. I can't go any further than that. Wow, this is uh, huge news that, Steve Pachenik is breaking on our show right now for me to reiterate, I guess, in my own words, President Trump and his administration and friendlies inside the White House in D.C. have launched a sting operation knowing this Democrat fraud was coming. And, you know, Steve, you said Trump's been talking about this for months, months. Actually, it's really been years. This is from President Trump on October 10th, 2012. He said, it doesn't matter who you vote for. It matters who is counting the votes end quote, be careful of voter fraud. So he's obviously known about this forever. I mean, is this the genius of Trump playing out? I mean, long term? Trump is far more brilliant than people understood. I knew about Trump. I don't personally work for him and I, I don't deal personally with him, but he knows that I've known him for well over 30 to 40 years when he built ice skating rinks for free. And I had my children go there and he was very gracious to New York and to the United States. He then. All right, Steve, we got to take a break. We'll be right back with more of Dr. Pachinik. Dr. Steve Pachinik has been coming on InfoWars for quite some time, and he perhaps just broke the biggest news story of the day. He did it in a floral button up shirt with a smile on his face from his kitchen. So, uh, Fox News and, and, and mainstream news, and all you with your billions of dollars and your big pharmaceutical contracts. I'll keep it PG rated. You can go fudge yourselves. Okay. Go fudge yourselves and enjoy it as well. Now, uh, I want to hone in on what Dr. Pacific broke again, folks. Steve can reiterate this in his own words. The whole election theft was a setup. Trump and his team knew it was coming just like you did. And they set everything in place like a mouse trap. And the Democrats walked right into it because of course they had to. They had to walk right into it. They had no other path to victory other than through this trap. So, Steve, um, two questions for you, and then I'm going to let you talk again. Um, One, does the the story that you just broke here um, with the the watermark on the ballots and this being an intelligence operation, and the, the, the simple answer to this could just be no, but does this have anything to do with this story from October 30th in the Washington Post Department of Homeland Security plans largest operation to secure U.S. election against hacking. Was this a DHS thing? Was this run by Trump separately outside of the Pentagon or the normal intelligence agencies? Um, So that would be my first question. And then my second question is, what is Trump doing right now, do you suppose, Steve Pachinik? 
you hit it right on the head. What you'll see in that Department of Homeland Security underneath that is National Geospatial Agency, NSA, cyber terrorism, QFS, blockchain comes out of cyber command, cyber war. That's something that we've been talking about on the Alex Jones Show for quite a while. And that's when I first started to write my novel was State of Emergency, predicting exactly what would happen this time around in terms of the states violating their mandate and the federal government coming after the states. Now what's happening is the federal government will come after the individual states. It was part of the agreement that they had with Homeland Security. I do believe, I'm not certain, it is within the confines of the Department of Homeland Security, but I do know it comes from the people I work with elsewhere in cyber communication, cyber terrorism, National Space Agency, and that onward. I can't, I can't go into the specifics. I'm, I don't have a clearance. I want everybody to know I'm not paid by the government, never have been. I'm more than happy to provide whatever information I think is appropriate. But again, it's, it's coming out of me. And I was allowed to say this because I last night I couldn't come on out. So, so let's talk about then uh, President Trump came out 3 a.m. Um, after the election on November 4th and, and really claimed victory. He, he did claim victory. Nobody else is reporting that. You won't see that in the headlines. Trump claimed victory on the morning after the election. He also claimed victory yesterday when he said we won Michigan, Georgia, Pennsylvania, and North Carolina. That puts Trump over 270. So Trump has declared victory twice. Uh, Dr. Pachinik, uh, n- knowing that Trump knew this was all coming, he had all the traps set. Is-, is Trump basically sitting back in the war room right now watching all the traps get sprung? What do you suspect the president is doing? Well, in, in a way, I don't want to be too uh, intellectual about it, but if you follow the, he said it a long time ago. He said, monitor the fraud in voting. He knew this along, as you said, for years he knew about it. And at the same time, he said, and Eric said several things before saying, watch what happens when you steal the votes. And Donald Jr. So the whole family was queuing in the country as to what might happen. The reason Donald has brilliantly stayed away and he's quiet now, it's part of the Sun Tzu strategy, which allows, and he's brilliant. He said the art, he knows the art of war intuitively. He basically allowed everybody to come forth. He knew Biden would take the initiative. He knew that uh, Kamala Harris would be in the forefront. He knew Biden's wife would be in the forefront. And he knew all this corruption would come out and Biden would be so self-aggrandizing, he didn't have to say anything. So I kind of smiled, no offense to Alex, my friend, but when Alex was frustrated a couple of hours ago, I heard, he said, where is the president? Well, he purposely stayed away. And as you know, that is has to be strategic because the president has always been out there. He's been out there with tweets. Yeah, this is probably the longest we haven't is. heard from the president. He's gonna pay a very heavy price for what he did to the president and what he's done to me and others. Dorsey will not get away with what he's done, the head of Twitter. This is not just, you know, simple threats. I, in 2016, I said there would be a coup against Hillary Clinton. 2020 is another coup against the Bidens. The Democratic Party, for all practical purposes, is dead, moribund, finished. There's nothing else they can do. They've been exposed. Nancy Pelosi, Maxine Waters, Diane Feinstein, the entire group is corrupt. And so this was the biggest sting operation that could be done. Only a genius like Trump could have done it. And the, the, the giveaway was exactly what Alex was saying. He was frustrated not to see the president. Well, the irony is when you do not see the president, that's when you have to be wary of what's about to happen. And that's the art of war by Sun Tzu. He allowed, and Trump brilliantly executed, he allowed Biden to come to the forefront. He allowed Biden to shoot off his mouth. He allowed allowed Biden to say everything he wanted, to say all the states that he thought he won, when in fact, we've marked every ballot. We've had soldiers in 12 states. I mean, thousands of soldiers. There has been no civil uprising. There's been no civil war. 
And this was prepared quite a while ago. And ironically, your show was part of it. No offense. Well, I just think it's incredible because this is the least we've heard from Trump probably in four years. I mean, the guy, as you said, is always leading from the front. He's always leading with his face, with his voice, with his with his attitude, with his mojo, if you will. And if, to not hear from the president, this is obviously strategic. Let me ask you this short. We got 90 seconds here. Try to answer this in 90. It'll be impossible. But we'll carry over with this. Who is running this Democrat Party right now? I mean, who is running? Who is the brain trust? It's obviously not Biden. I don't think it's Obama. Is it the Chinese? Are the Chinese setting them up? No, the Chinese are not part of it. With all due respect to Chinese communism and all that, I know Chinese communism quite well. I know Xi. I've known about Mao Zedong. The real issue here is the inherent corruption of a Democratic Party and its machinery, whether it's part of Obama, you know, the deep state on that side, the 500 people in national security who supported Biden and Obama. You can look at those names and they basically collectively constitute a collective consciousness in terms of corruption. But this was not something we were surprised. And this was something we were waiting for for the first day that Trump came in and he understood that. And he was warning them repeatedly. He said, vote stealing. He kept repeating it. And Eric repeated it and Trump Jr. So there were warnings on the horizon but no one picked it up thanks to his genius. So President Trump set the Democrats up, folks. They walked right into his trap. They tried to steal the election. Everybody knew they were going to do it. Of course, they had to. This is just incredible. And so, of course, they're they're falling apart. They, they have no policy. They have no record. They, they don't even live in reality. Their voters think there's 500 different genders. So, of course, they walked right into a trap brilliantly. Steve Pachenik is with us. Alex Jones coming up as well. Don't go anywhere. Dr. Steve Pachinik still with us. Incredible breaking news story from Dr. Pachinik here. President Trump has set the Democrats a trap and they tried to steal this election and they got caught doing it. President Trump is wargaming right now, watching them, watching all the traps get sprung. And of course he did. And of course they did. And so now here we are, Dr. Pachinik. My question for you now is, obviously, I mean, I, I still expect Biden to claim victory when they say that Biden won Nevada. They'll say that's 270. So we know the media will run this hoax. We all expected them to. Trump's declared victory as well. But my question is, not only how will this affect the, the single presidential election, which we, we know how that will be affected. What about the House? What about the Senate? We saw John James and other Republicans have a lead all night and magically at three o'clock in the morning, they're behind all of a sudden. Uh, could this operation also impact the House and the Senate? I'm not aware of that at this particular point in time. In, in theory, it could. I really don't know the specifics of that. I just know the specifics of what Trump himself, sui generis onto himself, what he has done and the people around him. It may involve others as well, but I'm, I do not know that. I, I can't claim more than I know. How long have these operations been going on, whether it's the Democrats, whether it's the Republicans, that made Trump so confident well, he could run this sting? Remember what you just quoted was, what, 2012, 2014? 2012, yes. All right. He's known about this probably most of his life. After 9-11, he was aware of what was going on, and soon— he understood what he had to do pretty much from the time he came in in 2016. He understood what he had to do, where he had to go. And of course, there were certain mistakes he made, but he learned very quickly. He, and eventually he's going to implement exactly what you and I've talked about, firing Fauci, getting rid of the CDC, HHS, a lot of others. The real issue at hand was that he, in 2018, and uh, Daria can check this, he, he signed a bill, but I think you said it before, with the uh, Homeland Security and with the various elements of cybersecurity. And that bill was instrumental in this uh, sting operation. And he, he's repeatedly said, and I, I don't have the quotes here, I just have the quotes, quote, Stolen election, you know, here, it, I'm just reading it, overcome your opponent with calculation, that's his statement, win by intelligence, that's his statement, 
and and he kept on writing hashtag steal the vote and he predicted that the votes would be stolen this is already 2016 so this was in place i'd say since 2018 or maybe even a little bit later i mean president trump it seems at this point i mean you talk about i mean i guess the analogy is like politically intellectually I, i'm like a I'm like a line of 10,000 firecrackers that has like an inch wick. Like as soon as you light it, I'm blowing up. It's never stopping. Trump is like a a nuclear fusion bomb with like a 10 year long wick that 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 he lit so long ago. And it's is it about to blow up, Steve? He doesn't blow up. Contrary to what the image is, I mean, he portrays that image and he loves to play it and he loves to, you know, re- he enjoys the American public and the American public enjoy him. And of course, I admire him and there are those who admire him immensely. You do not create, uh, how am I going to say it? You do not build uh, condos, uh, casinos, guest houses all over the world without having a certain amount of guile, intelligence, manipulation, wiliness, and the ability to enjoy what you're doing. And the one thing that comes across, and I, honestly, I always laugh when I hear him on the video, because he enjoys the audience. He enjoys America. And what he said, I'm, I'm sure he's not getting any pleasure out of this because he's warned repeatedly that this is a dangerous element of our republic. It's not something he's going to gloat about, nor do I. I mean, we've known about corruption for so long, but nobody's gone to jail. And at some point, somebody will be going to jail. And it took a Trump, not a politician, but it took a businessman, an American from the outside to come in and say, okay, you know what? I'm about America. And I'm going to make America number one. And I'm going to make the people in America proud of what happened and what's going to happen. The rest is up to you people. And that's what he's about. And he was willing to sacrifice his own reputation or whatever. He could be called a buffoon, big mistake. He would call it clown, big mistake. And the, and the uh, Democrats fell right into that trap. And honestly, I couldn't believe it because they had no savoir faire. They had no idea of what Trump was really about. They never read his book, The Art of the Deal, which literally says right in there, you're going to get hit, and you're going to get hit after you've been manipulated, and you won't know when you're manipulated. That's the art of the deal, and that sums with the art of war. Yeah, I, I, and honestly, when I heard Obama two days ago again say, in this democracy, we have the right to vote. You moron, Obama. I mean, this is a CIA operative that I kept saying should have gone to prison. Everything in Does Trump know that? Does Trump know who Obama is? Yeah. He knew already. He knew it. Exactly but does he have the intelligence files, too? I can't say that. But okay. Well. Trump already, when he was asked after 9-11, he was asked his opinion about the buildings. I never forget what he said. You know, in my opinion, those buildings were pretty well built. In other words, he knew something was going on. Trump does not show his cards, nor does he want to. And his kids, the family is wonderful, including his wife. And I abhor the fact that somebody in the New York Times ever said anything deprecating Melania Trump, who is as mm-hmm. much American as anybody else and is an incredible first lady. Oh, maybe the best ever. So many languages and incredibly beautiful and elegant. I'm proud to say she's our first lady. Yeah. And, and Steve, you know, you said something too about, you know, info wars or the war room having a role in this. It's funny because I noticed that in, in the final, let's say maybe three months or so leading up to the election, Every Trump rally or statement he was make sounded like it was a script. I mean, it sounded like somebody gave him a transcript of this show. And I never thought that was the case. I mean, I know there's people in D.C. that listen and, and it's, it's like scratching and clawing just to get any information to Trump. I just figured it was through osmosis. I mean, I'm just telling the truth. I mean, thank God there's a president because, like, I mean, I'm, up here, I'm basically up here intellectually, philosophically. I'm naked up here. Trump is like in full, like full cover, like they don't know how to read him. Oh, and I wouldn't say you're naked. I would say you well, I mean, you're pretty smart. I've got like a loincloth on, Steve. I mean, it's a big one, but, you know. Please, 
you know, self-deprecation is not impressive to me. Oh, and you're there, you have to talk a lot. And it takes a lot of cojones and it takes a lot of sense of self-worth and a sense of humor, which you and Alex have. And you got a great staff with Daria and Scott and all of them. But the point was, you were selected. I did not only selected you guys, but I personally selected you and those who I work with or deal with and friendly with, they understood that it would come through your show. Well, I just think it's amazing because it's, it's the, I wouldn't even be here if it wasn't for the audience. I, I, I wouldn't even have this platform. I wouldn't have this microphone. And so it, it's just crazy to be here because I've been, you know, they totally erased me, Steve, as you, as you're well aware. I, I mean, I thank God. I, I thank this audience. I mean, I thank Alex Jones for putting everything he's done in for 25 years to, to g- give me and build this platform. I thank Steve Pachinik for coming on this show and, and this show only with this information. I mean, I, this is just such a blessing. But, Steve, if you hold over, Alex Jones, as soon as he heard Steve Pachinik break the huge news about the Trump sting, Alex Jones hopped in his race car. He's probably going about 160 miles per hour right now. He's probably on the phone with engineers trying to rig up like a car helicopter so he can get here faster and avoid traffic. Uh, so, Steve, please stay right there. Again, ladies and gentlemen, Steve Pachinik, uh, he's, he's always reliable and unbelievable with his information. He's just the bombshell. President Trump set the sting trap for the Democrats to steal the election. Of course they did it. What comes next? Steve Pachinik, Alex Jones coming up. This is the InfoWars War Room. We'll be right back. Devastating. The fake news media today. With Dr. Steve Pachinik giving us the inside scoop of President Trump's sting operation that is ongoing right now. The traps have been sprung. They keep stepping. It's like like you walk into a room with mouse traps and there's just mouse traps everywhere ready to go. And you got to get to the other side. Oh, I mean, they're just jumping. Mouse traps are setting mouse traps up. You got 30 attached to your body. So they're starting to get slowed down. But, you know, I bet you President Trump was even aware of this, Dr. Pachinik, knowing uh, how he operates and reads so much. The Washington Post printed this story in August of this year. Mail-in ballots were part of a plot to deny Lincoln re-election in 1864. So they've been doing this for over 100 years. And Trump always talks about Lincoln. So I wouldn't be surprised if Trump was even referencing this history when deciding to spring this trap, run this sting operation against them. Well... I I can't speak on behalf of Trump, but he makes allusions that people think are just jokes. And certainly the New York Times or the phony New York Times and whatever's left of the New York Times or the Post, it's ridiculous. They want to ridicule him. But when he said he's comparable to Lincoln, he was making a joke. But at the same time, he was cueing in his audience as to what he might or might not do. And one of the things that the opposition never understood about Trump is they don't really understand in the nicest way possible how Machiavelli in his mind really is. In other words, it can span a wide range and it can go in there in any way you want and you are not gonna, you're not going to know what happened. And that was and still is his genius. Uh, I was given the privilege of announcing this, but I don't know who else knows it. I don't know what else will happen. The truth of the matter is that your show was chosen and you have the good or the benefit. And I hope this will result in a lot of arrests and the end of a problem. Well, look, Steve, I hope America has the benefit. I want to be clear here, but but let's get back to the issue. You know about regime change. What what kind of power right now? What what is the element here or how much power does Trump have? Because nobody talks about this. Trump is still the president. Trump is the president of the United States. It seems to be a factor people forget. And he has the U.S. people behind him. Trump could have 50 million people in the streets tomorrow if he wanted to. What kind of power is that when we when we're here looking at this uh, potential regime change? We'll call it that for lack of a better term in in this transfer period. In philosophy, we have a statement that says, somewhat greater than which cannot be conceived. (laughs) In other words, he has a lot of power, and that power will be uh, implemented when he wants to. In turn, the press tries to describe him as highly circumscribed, that he has to depend on the House, on the Senate. Not really. He will assume far more power than anybody's seen before to the benefit of the American public and getting our 
economy back in shape. Uh, he knew he made a mistake with the shutdown. He knew this coronavirus thing was nonsense and the masks were just a shameful mark on our society, but that will all change. And in turn, he understood what you guys were about. It has nothing to do with me. I'm just a messenger. And I'm not the anointed messenger. There are those who are anointed. I'm not. I just happen to be somebody who's been around for a couple of regimes. Steve, you just mentioned the lockdowns, the masks, the COVID nonsense. Of course, you called this out day one. You were on air with us back earlier in the year. Uh, InfoWars was again on the leading edge of that. But I'm curious now that, that we're looking at this in retrospect. We were all very frustrated. Did Trump, and I'm sure it was like a thorn in his side, did Trump put up with the COVID nonsense because he knew that this was coming and this was going to be bigger? He put up with it. I can't tell you exactly his chain of thought. I knew from the, if one would understand Trump, one would, un, one would understand that from the very beginning, he understood that the Democrats had to reveal their own nefarious deeds. And he could talk about it, he could demonstrate it in the same way he allowed Fauci to come to his own downfall. And ironically, on your show, when I said a year ago or two years ago, get rid of Fauci, his retort was correct a couple of weeks ago when he said, I'm going to get rid of Fauci, but let me just get reelected. And now is not the right time. And he was right, now being the time when he was running for election. So my point to you is he does listen to the show. He does understand what's going on. I don't think he was being patronizing when he said to Alex in the very beginning. I remember when Alex said, you know, I listen to you. He, Trump, listens to him. And he's a patron. So I think this is more of a testimony to you guys, not so much to me, but to you guys. And you guys have done a great job. And Alex has done a great job. And you guys have done a great job. And that's why Trump really kind of selected you guys to carry the banner. And it's not an accident. When I said to you a while ago, I think the last show, when I said alternative media has become the mainstream, I wasn't kidding. And, and uh, Alex said to me, well, how do I come to these conclusions? Well, number one, I'm not in the mainstream of anything, but I tend to be the black swan, as you guys are the black swan. But 20 years ago, I realized very quickly that an Alex Jones, whoever he might be or whatever he was, is a brilliant man who could understand and aggregate information very quickly and disseminate it in a way that people would understand it. At times, somewhat comical, at times, somewhat boisterous. And Trump could understand that. And Trump could identify with it. But beware the man who's silent. That is the caution I give. Well, and I just look at this, too. I mean, Trump was such a, a blessing from God, I guess you could say, to become our president. Because, he, he, you know, if all of this plays out and he, and he says, you know, we'll be tired of winning, if all this plays out and he gets, he gets all these people caught and arrested, engaged in the theft, spying on his campaign, all the other stuff. By the way, the tea leaves read, I mean, Esper has just signed his resignation letter. So the tea leaves read, I mean, that means they know he's, <laughs> he wouldn't be signing that if he thought Biden was about to come in. I'll, I'll just put it that way. So, I mean, they, they see the tea leaves here. I said years ago was to get rid of Esper and get rid of Mill. That was the first person I designated. But do you think that's a sign that Trump has won this, that Esper's like, okay, Biden's not coming in, I'm out? He understands what's coming down the road. Hmm. And Trump has said, I mean, you know, get me reelected and we'll start looking at these people. I mean, Ray, Haspel, I mean, that's, that's the swamp right now. He has incredible staff. Grinnell is one of these guys, just incredible. The DNI and the head of the CIA or the acting, he's just amazing. And he brought in just people who are amazing. And I've got to, you know, give my kudos to the gay community who really supported Trump. And, and that was not in the mainstream and people didn't realize that. But I knew very well that they were strong supporters, and very vocal. Oh, Steve, I couldn't even get a uh, I couldn't get a gay pride Trump hat. It was the, sold out. <laughs> I'm serious. I wanted the gay. It was a cool hat. The rainbow make America it sold out. I can't. Oh, and I can't say anything. I, I, 
I mean, I'm not saying I have a crush on Steve Pachinik. I, I'm just saying that I liked the Make America Pride hat is, is all I was saying there. Oh, and I understand that the, the reality is this involved the cross section of America. I'm just a simple messenger. This involved thousands of people who are in the White House, the State Department, the Homeland Security, the intelligence systems. But, you know, but that's what I was getting to, Steve. I mean, talk about the soft touch. I mean, because this is such a fragile thing. I mean, it's like, you know, if you have to dust the glass menagerie, right? Like in the book, The Glass Menagerie, very soft. It's very fragile. I mean, if Alex Jones or I were to try to dust this thing, it'd be in thousands of pieces. I mean, Trump had the perfect touch, it seems. Well, let me put it this way. Trump can modulate his temper and his tone accordingly. If you see what he does and you see how much he enjoys it, you can understand that this is a man who has a wide range of expression, understanding and insights. What he allows you to believe or think, i.e. if he plays the fool and you believe he's the fool of the buffoon, then so so be it for you. I mean, you're in trouble because that's exactly where he kind of like you. Obama. You'll never be president. Well, that's the point. Obama was the real perversion of the system because he was nothing more than a candidate that was brought out of the CIA. Not one word of anything about him was true. He wasn't involved in the Chicago elements. He was in the CIA. His mother was an operative in Indonesia. His grandparents on the maternal side were operatives. I mean, it was just nonsense. And at the same time, you had Biden who was co-opting him as well. I mean, you talk about two idiots basically running the country and accomplishing nothing except the war in Iraq, Libya, Serbia, Somalia, Syria, Sudan. No one talks about that. Yeah. And the first thing Trump said and why I was so proud of him, I'm taking troops out of Syria, Afghanistan, Iraq. All right, Steve, stay right there. Alex is rushing in to talk to you. He's begging to talk to you.